hey there guys and welcome back on this week's show the excavator part three Well, we continue this week with our excavator build from Toys and Joys, and I hope you guys have been following along. When we left last week, we just finished drilling our track segments, and now it's time to take all those segments over to the table saw. Well, if we look at our side profile view of each of our track segments here, we can see if we look closely that there is a 45 degree chamfer on each corner of these tracks. So we will, believe it or not, do that at the table saw. And for this, these gripper push pads really excel, setting it to the height of your stock's thickness. And then with that extra support foot, it really makes this for a safe process. So we've just carefully set our fence. We will run each piece through, trimming off each one of the corners of each track segment. And what you end up with is something that looks like this. So let's get all of our track segments chamfered the way that they should be. Guys, this process of cutting these 45s, anything to do with these tracks, any model where you have multiple, multiple pieces and having to perform the same uh, procedure repeatedly over and over and over again, it's what I call production work. And when it comes to model building, this is the most dangerous work, in my opinion, ever. You are dealing with, especially at the table saw, you are dealing with a tool that can take your fingers off or it can cause serious damage. So with production work, as I call it, it's repetitive motion. You become complacent or you have the possibility to become complacent and when you become complacent you take shortcuts. When you take shortcuts you put yourself in jeopardy. So guys please I'm going to give you the biggest piece of advice I could ever give you in one of these model builds. Take breaks. Be mindful of what you're doing. Pay attention to that table saw, where your fingers are, where the blade is in relation to your push block, your stock, your hands. Keep your eyes open, pay attention here, please, and take breaks. Do 10 and then go off and sweep off your scroll saw or your jointer. Do another 10 and then sweep the floor. Do something, but take breaks with this. Don't become complacent. I'd hate to have anybody have an injury. Well, it is now time to cut these dados and rabbits that are here for our track segments. Some of them will be done at the table saw, while others will be done, well, you know what? Let me just show you. The first ones that we're gonna start off with are these bottom ones right here. That will be these outside rabbits. And they will get cut on the side that has the 332nd through hole. The way that you can tell that if you're not used to looking at prints is through the different views. If we look here, we have a solid line right here. That denotes a corner, whereas there is no line here across this. This is one solid section. This is your solid section. So here is your 1 8 hole. That corner right there that is your solid line that it shows here on your side view. So that's how we know that this is our 332nd diameter hole side. So let me take you over to the table saw and show you how we're going to cut these little rabbits on the outside of our track segments. Well, what I've done is I have made up this little sacrificial fence plate to go on top of my incra fence. Um, you can do this with just your regular uh, cross cut or miter fence on your table saw, but the purpose of this is to help or try to help in preventing blowout on the back end of your piece as you cut the little rabbit. So I have a dado blade set up here. You don't need a dado blade. If all you have is a regular blade, then you can just cut it with a regular blade. So we'll make sure that our 332nd hole is facing down. Guys, please do not do this. That is way too close to that table saw blade. So get a clamp on this. And I would suggest holding it down tight to the fence and tight to your table. 
clamping your clamp in place. That will do two things here. That is going to help to stabilize this sacrificial backer board and it is going to clear your hands away from that piece of material. So let me cut this one and I'll show you what we end up with. And you end up with this one rabbit cut in this bottom corner on the 332nd diameter hole side. So at this point you want to flip it 180 degrees, put it back in its place, making sure that the 332nd hole is facing down, clamp it there so that you don't need to hold it with your hands, and make another cut. And what you end up with is this. So just measure carefully and on all of your pieces now, cut that rabbit in the side of the track. Guys, please be careful. And as I said, this is production work, extremely dangerous stuff. Um, just pay attention and take breaks and eventually you'll get through them all safely with all of these still intact. And that would be that step done. Um, our casualty list is getting larger. This is why we make extras. For one reason or another, these pieces just didn't cut it. Ha, <laughs> no pun intended. Uh, so they're junk. Mark them with an X, get rid of them so they don't get mixed in. I don't know if I mentioned it, but the blade is set to a quarter inch for this. All of these are a quarter inch deep through both uh, sides of each segment. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take a regular blade and we're going to cut the exterior edges of all of these um, dados in this case. We're not going to run the dado blade all the way across. It's too hard on these pieces and doesn't leave enough material to sit on the table saw. I don't feel it's safe. So what we're going to do is just use a regular blade and just cut along these outside edges of each one. And I'll demonstrate that for you over at the table saw. So I have a regular table saw blade installed here. I've reset my fence. The blade is at a height of a quarter inch and each one of our track segments, we're going to place a cut. So we'll just clamp one in place here just like this, and we'll run this one through for one pass, rotate it 180 degrees, and then run it through again. And what that will give us is the edges and leave our 3 16 inch wide tabs off to the side. We are going to continue this for every piece on this side with the 332nd diameter hole and then we will do the same upright cuts on the opposite side. Um, the opposite side, however, will be a little different in that we will cut along this line here to leave one eighth of an inch material and then we will line up the blade to cut up along this line so that we're leaving 730 seconds of an inch in between the saw curves. We will repeat that on all the pieces and when you get all those table saw cuts done, well, I'll show you what you've got at that point. And what you should have at this point in time is something that looks like this. Um, just careful, slow setup. Make sure to clamp your pieces against your fence while cutting and you will be just fine. So we now need to get rid of some of these areas. These little small nubs in here can be cut out and as well this entire center section here. So on each one of these center sections, I'm just going to draw a line at a quarter of an inch up from the bottom. And we are going to head over to the scroll saw. Well, I have a number three blade in here, a number three reverse tooth blade. And the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to trim out the center little sections here on our track.
And now the next thing I want to do is I want to remove this section. So just following along our quarter inch line, we will just cut that middle section out. And this is what you end up with. So you need to do this to each and every one of your track sections. And after an awful lot of cutting and trimming, we end up with this. <laughs> All of those pieces are now squashed into here. Um, now, truth be told, I did a couple test fits and I didn't like the way they fit together in this joint here. There just wasn't enough room for the track to bend. Um, so what I've done is I've actually deepened each one of these cuts all the way around to 930 seconds. So just an extra 30 second to give us some space in there. So what we want to do now is pick out 56 of our best pieces of track. Look for flaws in the piece. Uh, look for holes that are not centered that may have veered off and pick out 56 of the best ones. And then using those two inch pins that we cut, we are going to dry fit together two lengths of track that are going to be 28 of these little sections each. And at this point, we just want to test to make sure that all the tracks are working or functioning correctly. Um, you also want to make sure that all of these are sitting flat. If they're not sitting flat, replace the link that is sitting kind of weird because chances are that hole has uh, veered off. The, the bit wandered and it deflected and your hole is not centered. But you just want to take it from end to end and just make sure that each piece has free movement because if it doesn't have free movement, it's not going to work. Once you're happy with that, which I am, then we will now fold this over on itself and make a full complete track. And what you want to look for here is that the track is actually in alignment with itself. In other words, if you join this together, it's not suddenly twisted. It's not suddenly out of whack. It's still sitting nice and straight along the sides and it still looks looks good. You will have some play in it, of course, because of the way they're cut. But for all intents and purpose, they should now line up beautifully with each other. All right, so I'm going to finish testing this other piece of track here. So far, I'm quite pleased with their um, outcome. They're looking fantastic. You can give all your little pieces a sanding, just a light sanding on the surface. Um, try not to take away any of their dimension if you can just a tiny little sanding. And what we're going to do at this point now is because we had discrepancies on the print, I'm gonna do a dry fit of the entire track assembly because there's a lot more to do with these segments and I don't wanna go through all that trouble if the track isn't going to work. So let me see you after I get this dry fit done. Well, I found a couple things that I didn't like in the dry assembly, and one of them was the center dado that runs down the middle here that these guide wheels rest in. And I found that it just wasn't deep enough because these wheels were rubbing. So that was no big deal. I just took my router plane and put a quarter inch bit in there and ran through it very carefully and just skimmed it down to make it so that these wheels all clear now and spin. Um, that was one issue that I had here. The other issue, believe it or not, I haven't put this one together yet, but hopefully it's the same as the other side. Um, the other issue, believe it or not, is that it claims that I needed 56 track pieces you divide that by two for the tracks, and that's 28 tracks per side. Well, I was actually short, and I could not put the track together. I could not join it, and I was short by one whole track length, so or one whole link. So I had to add another link. Now, this could be for a number of reasons. It could be because the holes were drilled incorrectly, or, you know, the, if, if you get... 
your holes off by a little tiny bit and you spread that over 56 times throughout the uh, entire track, it's going to add up. Well, mine added up to one link. So let me just see if I can get this together here and I'll show you what we end up with. And we'll just straighten this out a little bit here because it's gone crooked on me inside the track. Get those guide wheels centered on there. There we go. And what you end up with is this. And we can try this. And now this isn't how it's really going to spin, but we can see that it turns just beautifully. Now these guide wheels here, once they get glued in, they're going to help quite a bit. But for now, uh, we at least know that our track fits here and that the assembly works. So we can take it on this one or on this one. They both are the same. Um, there we go. Um, everything is looking great at this point. I'm pleased that they fit in place there. We can now turn our attention to the rest of the track pieces. So at this point, we need a bunch of 1 8 by 1 8 thick stock. Uh, in our case, it'll be walnut. Well, over at the table saw, you want to rip plenty of 1 8 by 1 8 inch stock. And what that is going to be for is these ribs right here. So I've taken some measurements and we want to make them the same width as this here, but they will be 45 degree chamfered on either side. So the best and the safest way to do this is with your miter box. So get yourself a fine handsaw and cut the amount that you need here. You will need two for each link. So we have, well, there's supposed to be 56 links, but we do not have 56 links. We actually have 58 in my track. So for these pieces, you will need a total of 116 of these little ribs. Well, gluing the treads on is tedium personified, uh, but just take your time, be patient with it, and have a little bit of fun. Turn on some music, you know, zone out and glue these together. Um, all you want to do is I'm going to show you how to line these up. You're going to put a little bead of glue on the bottom end of each track piece, or of each tread rather. So just put a little bead of glue here like this. And then you will line it up along this cut edge on one side of the track. Just like that. And once you get that one on, you can take another piece of your tread, again, a thin bead of glue, and then you will line it up with the inside cuts on the opposite side of the track. Now, the great thing about this is you don't need to use squares or anything to line these up because your guidelines have already been cut, and as long as you're you are careful with the cutting of your treads, you will have no problem lining up these, uh, or with the track links rather, you will have no problems lining up your treads. And there you go. Now you can just clean up your squeeze out and those will be done. And when you get all of them finished, you end up with a bunch of pieces that look like this. Now, <laughs> There's a lot of them to do. So glue all of the treads onto all, in my case, 58 track links. It's now time to cut the next pieces. And that will be these top little ones right here. For these ones, you're going to need some 532nd inch thick stock. You can get that measurement from right here. We can see those pieces. And as well, they are a quarter inches or a quarter inch high. So we will need to rip a bunch of stock that is five thirty seconds of an inch thick and a quarter inch wide. From there, we can just use a miter box again and cut these angles to these dimensions here. You can just scale it right off the drawing. And for these ones here, 
it's a 25 degree angle on both sides. So we need to cut two per link of our track. And once you get all of those cut, well then it's time to glue them on to our track uh, sections. And it's the same tedium that we had with gluing on the treads, except this time we're going to use a stop ruler. Um, you can use a combination square, whatever you like. I even had a ruler depth stop that I made here on the shop. You can make one of those if you like. Um, it's a pretty easy process. What we need is if we look here at the drawing, we need to leave a space between the two of them um, that need to be glued on here of 11 30 seconds of an inch. So do some measurements on your track and set the stop ruler or your combination square or what have you to a depth where when you glue these things on, you will be left with 1130 seconds in the middle. Now, I don't want to give you that measurement that I've calculated because yours might be different depending on the width or the tolerance of your equipment. So all you want to do is essentially same process as before, a little bit of glue on one of these. Don't go crazy with the glue. You don't need a lot. And then we're going to take our piece, place it on our stop ruler, and we are going to take our little track guide and we will place it on our section, on our track link. These little nubs that stick out right here, it will get aligned with the that edge of the track link. So basically put it in place, hold it there for a second or two, lining it up with the edge of our ruler and the edge of this cut right in here. And that's it for that one. And then we'll do the same thing on the opposite side. Little bit of glue, turn our piece of track around line it up on the edge of our ruler like this making sure it's sitting flush and square and then we will put it in place and now it's just a matter of cleaning up the squeeze out and we will do that to every single one of in my case 58 track sections and once you get your squeeze out cleaned up, just double check, just make sure that nothing shifted while you were messing around with that squeeze out because we need that center measurement to be right. If you're off a tiny little bit, you're okay. It's not that big of a deal, but do your best to be as accurate as you can here because those guide uh, strips there are going to be what keep this track aligned when it's running. And unfortunately, that's all the time that we have for this week. Um, guys, these tracks are a very slow, slow process. And the best advice I could give you here on getting a very successful track is take your time. Don't rush. The more you rush, the more mistakes you made. Say with the drilling that we did, uh, you go rushing the drilling, you're gonna make your track twist. You go rushing the cuts on the scroll saw or whatever method you used to get the links that fit together, they're not gonna fit together properly. And if you go rushing those parts like the uh, treads or the back roller guides, they're not going to fit right either. So take your time, do 10 of them and then go do something else and then do another 10 and go do something else. Take breaks and you'll do just fine. Guys, I hope that you've enjoyed today's content. The purpose of these series is to give you the confidence to try this model for yourself. And I hope that you're trying that for yourself at home. If you haven't already, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. You click that bell and then you won't miss the notifications of the future episodes of the program. I hope that you've enjoyed part three of the series today. Guys, I hope you're going to give this a try for yourself. I really, really do. And more importantly, I hope you're going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another woodworking video.